Welcome back viewers to Mini Home Workshop. Back in April 2020, my wife made the long journey home up country to where she comes from to see her family, like she does every year. Unfortunately, while she was there, they closed the borders, forced everyone into quarantine, and she got stuck there for six, seven weeks. And uh, I was at home alone, just me and the dog. So I took to watching YouTube videos and Home Built Ways took my interest. And watching them, I watched many, just about everything I could find. And some of them blew my mind as to how rough they were and and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. But there were some actually very excellent ones like uh, Debbie Norval and a few others who, who just did really great work. And I decided that uh, I'd have a crack at it. So that's what this video is all about, my mini home lathe. My, addition, uh, my initial idea was to uh, build a lightweight machine that could be picked up and moved around the place. Um, I found this piece of uh, 6 by 2 inch RHS at one of the local scrap yards and uh, initially tried to clean it up with a flap disc and then a wire wheel. Then I found these little blue scarab pad things at one of the big local hardware stores. They are fantastic. Rips paint and rust off like you wouldn't believe. If you've never tried them, track some down and give them a go. You won't be sorry. If you watched my first video, you may have spotted the two McPherson struts leaning against the wall in one of the photos. They were chopped up to get the two 20mm shafts out of them to use as the rails for the bed. Shafts in shock absorbers are chrome plated and, and pretty tough and they don't tend to wear a lot so uh, they make good candidates for this sort of stuff with some uh, linear rail bearings mounted on them. Here in Thailand we have a, an online sales organisation called Lazada that I use to purchase things like these linear bearings and, and anything else that I needed. That little uh, drill tailstock thing you can see there that was bought from them. Anything that I couldn't make myself or, or didn't have the gear to, to make it these hand wheels uh, the lead screws the lead screw nuts all these sorts of things came from lazada they're generally pretty good to deal with not much of it is kept in stock here in thailand and it all tends to come out of china they're pretty much the same as uh, banggood and ebay places like that and give similar service i guess this quick change of the tool post came from them as well uh, it was cheap pretty bloody nasty though uh, you may have seen this uh, in my opening video, episode one. It was made to mount the compound slide on, pretty damn useless thing in the end, uh, and got replaced later. The spindle I bought from AliExpress, because the same thing on Lazada was about twice the price. It's very well made, uh, well and truly inside the specifications that they uh, allowed for it and um, I'm quite happy with it, really. I ordered the 125mm or 5 inch version which is not shown there, uh, which is made to order and it took a bit longer to get, but um, I'm glad I did now. 4 inch would have been too small. The 5 inch chuck is working out pretty well. The chuck on the other hand was a disappointment. They um, were advertising a Sanu and supplied this no-name thing instead. Bit of rubbish really. Mounting the spindle proved to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, luckily I found a piece of pipe that was roughly the same size. And split it in half and then massaged it all with a hammer until the spindle will fit nicely into it. And then made up a bracket and mounted it all. It took some sorting out and trying to align it but eventually I got somewhere close and I still have a little bit of uh, misalignment I tend to machine uh, tapers at the moment over a few inches it, it's a, about 0 0.1 of a millimetre to 0 0.2 but I'll sort that out sooner or later I decided pretty early in the piece that I was going to use a, uh, a universal motor out of a washing machine it took me a while to find one and I, I tried all the, the local scrap yards trying to pick one up but eventually found one on Lazada uh, it wasn't cheap, but uh, it was what I wanted to use. Got one, fitted it up and uh, gave it a bit of a test run.
when I got to the point where I wanted to start building some covers and, and covering everything up, I made myself a small uh, sheet metal bender, which just clamps onto the bench. And it does a pretty good job, as you can see by that little sample piece sitting on the bench there. One of the local steel merchants had uh, this three-quarter angle on, I suppose you could call it, not made the usual way. It's seems to it looks as though it's folded from a sheet it allowed me to keep things compact and build a framework that I could mount some aluminium sheet that I bought from a little engineering supply place that, that I get all my cap head screws and things from while I was making the covers and, and I built a splash back and had to incorporate somewhere to, uh, to, to allow for the back of the motor which was protruding out past the body for the headstock I suppose you could refer to it as. So I, once I finished the covers I started fitting up things like the tachometer and speed controls and things like that and uh, tested out a, a little cheap speed controller but one of the issues with with these um, motors and putting normal speed controllers like a fan speed control on it is when you drill in it or load it up the thing will bog down and lose a lot of speed as you can see in this uh, in this video coming up I bought a cheap plastic bodied vernier and mounted it up as a poor man's DRO. Uh, the only issue with it is it's only got one decimal place so it's just not all that useful really. The universal motors have built into the back of them a tachometer and if you can hook into the tachometer then you can use it to overcome that bogging down and there's some guys in Russia that build these little speed controllers that actually tap into them. I ordered one, it wasn't cheap, and I waited for a very long time. Uh, thanks to COVID, there weren't many flights coming out of Russia to Thailand, so it took quite a while to get here. Uh, I wired it up wrong and uh, promptly blew it to pieces. But uh, a local guy that does all my TV and electronic repairs repaired it for me for... for nothing it was cheap as I couldn't believe how, how quickly and cheaply fixed it for me but I could never quite get it to work properly so I found another one another Russian guy and ordered one from him um, it has some issues it, I, I can't get the idle speed of the motor down below 300 odd revs but now this thing's starting to get a little heavy and uh, the idea of moving it from bench to bench and store it in a corner somewhere went out the window so I built a little trolley to mount it on and works really well, it's got some lockable wheels on it and it sits pretty stationary when I'm using it even when the thing's having a bit of a shake, rattle and roll the original tailstock mounting that I built proved to be not terribly efficient it was set too far back and didn't have enough length so I had to make a new one something that uh, would still mount on the rails in the same spot but get me a little more forward and allow me to attack things uh, the way I needed to Right from the get-go, I always um, intended to put a power feed on onto the carriage. Lazy bastard, really. I, I didn't particularly want to stand there all day making cuts. And I had some pretty fanciful ideas of building a, uh, a magnetic drive and using a little 12-volt motor. I tried lots of different ways of, of trying to make it work. I even, even made my own magnets and tried all sorts of things. The idea was to use it the way a magnetic clutch works on an automotive aircon conditioning compressor but I just couldn't get it to work so I abandoned that idea and uh, came up with a mechanical dog clutch idea um, it wasn't overly successful either but all of these problems that I was having uh, will get rectified later in version 2 when I finally got to make my first chips, I, I was just so, so disappointed. 
To say it had a chatter problem is a massive understatement. The thing was just hammering and taking chunks out of everywhere and it sent me on a, on a mission to try and find what was causing it. It took me quite a while and in the end I, I decided that, that um, it was mostly in the linear bearings. So I bought a heap of new bearing inserts and, and couldn't believe what I, what I saw and I went to fit them. They're supposed to be a press fit. Some of them just fell into the hole. It was just rubbish. They're, they're just Chinese linear bearings are just rubbish. So uh, it led me in the end to throw the whole idea out the window of using linear bearings and move to something else. Again, that'll be covered in version two. I did manage to improve things somewhat, but not enough to keep me happy. One of the first things I did to uh, try and find the problem was to get rid of that crappy little compound slide and uh, I used this lump of aluminium and just mounted that in its place and it's what gave me the, the better result mostly. Like I said, still wasn't happy so I just decided to replace it all. Well, I hope you've enjoyed all of that. Uh, it's been quite a journey. I started to work on it and was having so much trouble with my knees that I had to stop everything and go and have a knee replacement so that set me back three or four months and uh, I'm now nearly five months into the replacement and I've been getting stuck into it for the last four weeks or so and I've been building all new um, cross slide and compound slide which I'll bring to you in the upgrade video which will come next the uh, episode four I think it'll be so make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, if you, I'd be very interested in knowing what you think of uh, this style of video. Uh, I will endeavour in the future to make more actual video to use in these things rather than using still images. I had no intention originally of uh, creating videos and things from what I was doing. I was just doing it for my own uh, enjoyment. Please comment down below and uh, don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe to keep up with what's going on. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.